Hey guys, I'm Carrie with Mama Dear City I Wine. I really want to thank y'all for tuning in today. Now, it's Friday, so if you are already subscribing to my channel, you know that that is the day that we bring you fun and fabulous collabs. I think we need to name this Fabulous Collab Friday. What do y'all think? I'm declaring it. That's what we're going to name this. Anyway, this Friday, we decided that we are going to do a Pinterest remake. And the Pinterest remake that we're going to do is cake plates. Now, y'all know cake plates are not just for storing cakes. They make great risers. You can put them in your bathroom. You can put things on it. I love a cake plate. So don't think you just have to use it for cake. Think outside of the box. And when I show you these fabulous cake plates that I made today using nothing but Dollar Tree items, you are just going to flip out when you see how awesome they turned out. Now, I'm not going to lie, everything did not go as I had planned. I had a couple of fails, but I ended up figuring it out in the end, and they all turned out fabulous. I've got three cake plates or cake stands, whatever you want to call them, planned for y'all this week, and I just I absolutely love how they turned out. We've got different paint techniques. We've got different sizes. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. So I cannot wait to share those with y'all. So keep watching. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on all your notifications. That way you don't miss anything that I have got planned. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss it. So turn those notifications on right now. So that's enough talking. Let's get started, y'all. Okay, so for the first project, I'm gonna use four of these little buckets that are in the St. Patrick's Day section right now at Dollar Tree. And they come in a set of five, but I'm only gonna be using four. And I'm also gonna need a set of these little burner covers from Dollar Tree. I'm only gonna be using one, but I will use this one in another project today, so stay tuned for that. But I'm gonna put the larger one over here to the side because we're gonna start off with just the small one. Now, today I'm also using my Sure Bonder glue gun. This is my large glue gun. It's like industrial type, I think. But I have to use the big one because I'm using the Tough Sticks today as well. This is a really industrial strength glue, and I want to make sure that my pieces are going to hold nice and snug. But as a backup, I'm going to go ahead and double glue this with E6000 as well. So the first thing that we want to do is to just take off these little pieces. They just kind of snap in. And y'all, this project is so easy, it's not even funny, but you're never gonna believe how cute it looks when we're done. So let's flip our burner cover on its bottom side here. I'm going to take a little bit of E6000 Sure your glue stick is pushed down all the way. Oops. Okay. Now it's time to paint this puppy up. Now, because I'm going for that chalk painted look today, I'm going to use the chalk paint from Rust-Oleum, and this is actually a spray paint, and I'm using the color Linen White. So I'm going to run outside and give this a nice coat of paint, and I'll be right back. While our first project is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start on our second project. And for this project, we're going to need the big burner cover. We're also going to need this vase. This was with the flower section, uh, you know, in Dollar Tree where the silk flowers and those shells and rocks and all that is. That's where I found this piece at. So we're going to take this piece and we're just going to flip it upside down. 
I'm just going to use some of our E6000 again along the edge and then I'll put my hot glue in the center here. And again, I'm using the Tough Sticks from Surebonder. Now, let's try to find the center. Should have measured this before I started. That's pretty good. Okay, we'll just push it down. And there we've got another cake stand. Now, the paint technique that I'm going to be using on this one is super, super cool. But I am going to let this dry for a little bit before I start painting on it. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and glue our third and final project. So for this project, I've got my plate that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Let's go ahead and get rid of this label here. And I also picked up this glass out of the glass section. I think it's supposed to be a wine glass. I don't know why they make this so difficult. This is the bottom, so it's really not that big a deal. Okay, and for this project, we're going to use the same glue and technique that we did with the first two. But this is what this cake plate is going to look like. Isn't that pretty? Now, you could also turn it upside down like this. And it kind of gives it like a mushroom shape. And you could put a smaller 6-inch cake on this one. But I'm going to flip it over and use this one. Now, for this one, you could also use um, a Oh, like a cornbread tin or a pizza pan. You could use a lot of different things, but unfortunately, you could even use one of these, but unfortunately, my Dollar Tree was out of all of those, so I resorted to the plate. And again, I'm just going to double glue here with my hot glue and my E6000. And this is just how I measure. I just kind of eyeball. I know it's a terrible, terrible habit. Okay, now while I've got this flipped upside down, I am going to take some of my hot glue and just run around the edge here just to give it a little extra security. Okay, now the, again, the paint technique that I'm going to be using for this one, don't worry about um, what the inside of this looks like because I am going to be painting this and baking the paint on. So I'm going to give these three a few minutes to cool off and to be fully dry before I start painting those because I don't want them to come apart. So let's give it just a few minutes. Okay, so... Now that we've let the glue cool for just a little bit, I am going to be using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster to paint our second project. Now, I did go back and add a little bit of hot glue around the bottom of this one just to reinforce this. And I'm just using some short handle foam brushes that I picked up from Walmart to paint this. 
I'm going to start with the inside or with the bottom first. And I really do love this plaster color. We're going for that Ray Dunn look, and this is a great color for that. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna go back and put a second coat on it. Okay, so for the next project, I'm gonna be using two colors of multi-surface apple barrel paint that I picked up from Walmart. I'm going to be using dark granite and also timeless gray. I want to do sort of a medium color for the base coat because I do want to go back in with some um, with some of each color. So for the base coat I'm just going to mix these two colors half and half or they're about half and half. And I'm just going to use one of my little short, stubby apple barrel paint brushes. I better grab me a piece of newspaper. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to paint the bottom first. Okay, that is the first coat on all three of my plates. I'm going to go ahead and let all three of these dry and go ahead and put a second coat on off camera and when I come back we will be ready to start our distressing and our painting techniques. So hang tight. All right, y'all. So I've let all of my cake plates dry overnight and I'm totally loving the way that they all look just standing here together. But I wanna take it up just a notch. Now this one is pretty much done. I did take some 320 grit sandpaper and just smooth the edges just so that it's a nice smooth surface because I did use the Waverly paintable chalk paint here. I'm going to add a decal to this and it, this is going to be my Ray Dunn knockoff. Now this one I'm going to take and make it look like wood. Didn't this turn out just adorable? So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. So to make this one look like our wood cake stand from Pinterest, I'm going to add in a few colors. So I'm going to use some of the Waverly chalk paint in plaster. And you really don't need much at all. And I also want to use some browns. This is the folk art color in coffee bean. And I'm going to use a little bit of black. Not much, just a little bit. So I've got one of my little wet sponge brushes here. And I just want to kind of give this the look of wood. That it's kind of old and antiqued wood. So I'll just put a little bit on and kind of rub it in place. We just want to kind of dirty it up a little bit. Now my sponge brush is a little damp.
now I want to take a little bit of the off-white Waverly paint that I used to paint this stand. Just want to kind of blend that in. I don't really want to have a lot of contrast. I just want a little bit. Don't forget the sides of your plate, too. And to finish it off, we're going to just put a little bit of black. You don't want much. We just want just a little bit to kind of highlight. And if you'll use your finger to kind of blend it in, that'll kind of help so that it's not such a dark contrast. Okay, now I'll be totally honest. I am not big in the way that this looks. So I'm just going to go back and paint a little more white on here. I don't really want this much showing. Okay, I think this looks much, much better. Alright, I really love the way that this turned out. I think adding the white over the top of it to sort of blend all the colors in was totally the way to go. So I'm going to move this one to the side and we're going to do this one next. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the galvanized cake stand next. Now I will be going back in with my two colors and this time I'm going to use them straight. The darker one and the lighter one. Remember, we mix the two together to get this color. And I'm just going to use my same little stubby brushes here. And I'm going to start with the top first. And then after I get the top finished, I'm going to bake it. Because the cool thing about this multi-surface paint is it is indoor-outdoor, but it's also dishwasher safe. So as long as you bake it in the oven at three, you bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. So I'm going to paint the top first and then I'm going to bake it and then I'm going to come back and do the rest of the plate. So I'll just take a little bit of this color and I want a dry brush. My brush is damp, but I'm just going to take the corners of my brush and get most of that paint off. And I know it looks kind of funky right now, but just hold your horses. It's going to get there. Okay, so now I'm going to take the same brush and pick up the darker color. Get 
we're going to do the same thing with the darker color. And then I'm going to go and put a little bit of each color. And then I'm going to start working these two together. That's why I like using these little stubby brushes because you can kind of twirl it around in your hand and make sure that everything is blended together nicely. I know it looks kind of funky right now, but once all the colors dry, it comes together and it looks so cool. Okay, so now that this is done, we're gonna put this on a cookie tin and I'm going to bake it in a cold 350 degree oven. Now, don't, don't warm your oven. Don't preheat your oven because you want your glass to warm up slowly with your oven. So just be sure to put it in a cold oven set to 350 degrees. And when we come back, I'll have the tops and the bottoms already done. All right, y'all, I totally admit I had a blonde moment. I had a Pinterest fail because I was not thinking because I totally used hot glue and E6000 to glue this. But the great news is it did not come apart, but I did have hot glue leaking down. So when you do yours, I would advise to just paint your pieces separate and then glue them when they are dried. Do not be like me. But anyway, I really love the way it's turning out. So I'm going to flip it over and I am going to paint the bottom side and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I went ahead and sprayed the top of this cake plate with my sealer. And this is the triple or the double thick sealer, the Krylon double sealer. And <laughs> I promise y'all the crafting gods are just not with me today because can y'all see this? When I went outside to spray, I totally got sand all in my project. Living at the beach sometimes does not have its privileges, especially when you're trying to craft. But no worries, I'm just going to go with it. I mean, if it bothered me really bad, I could sand it down and try to respray it when we weren't having like crazy winds. But it really doesn't bother me. So, this is the decal we're going to put on it. And I decided to put my... Krylon sealer on before I put my decal on is I want to be able to change it out for the seasons or the holidays or whatever just you know just because so if I by using that removable vinyl it will make it easy to do and it's already sealed so it should just peel right off of there when I want to change it so I decided to use cheat day today and for Easter I may do one of the cute little Easter sayings
there it is. Now I will admit by using just one of the um, the burner covers, it is a little bit flimsier than I thought it would be. So if you plan on using this for an actual cake, you might want to double up on those burner covers. Um, but yeah, I really love, I'm not going to use mine to display a cake. I'm just going to use it, you know, to put around my kitchen. And yeah, I think I love the way that that turned out. So we've got two of our projects finished. And now the only one we have left to do is to finish painting this. Now, I will admit I had a Pinterest fail. I had a blonde moment. I was not thinking that I used hot glue to double glue this down. So you can see... <laughs> I've got hot glue running down the side here, but I'm just going to keep painting and just go with it. But the good news is it did not come apart because my E6000 was already set. So when you do yours, just eliminate the hot glue or paint your pieces before you glue them down. So I'm going to finish up this and when I have finished the bottom part and I've baked it again, I will be back and we will put them all together so you can see what they look like. Okay, so at the last minute, I decided to add a little bit of rust around the edges here and also under the bottom where my glue kind of ran down. I guess we can call this a little happy accident because now it just looks like a little weld from your metal. Also put a little bit around the edge too so you can see it when it's setting down. Let me just show you really quick how I did this. Now I took some brown paint and it's sort of like a rusty brown. And I only need just a little bit. I just want to go around the edge here with the rusty color. Make sure you go all the way around. Once I get through with this, then I will bake everything one last time and then we'll be good to go. Okay, next I mixed in a little bit of this same rusty brown color and then a darker brown just to get an even deeper brown. I mean, it doesn't look bad like this, but I just really like to add in a little bit more color so that you get the depth. You just wanna lay your color down first, and then I'm gonna go back in with my little sponge brush and blend everything in together. Then I'm just gonna take my little moistened sponge brush and just blend it. Just do a patting motion. You don't want to rub it. You just wanna pat those colors together just so they blend. Okay, and there she is. I think it looks awesome. I'm probably going to go back in and put rust on the very bottom too, but she is done. Y'all, this one might be my favorite. I absolutely love it. It looks so much like galvanized metal. It's not even funny. Now, even though this is technically dishwasher safe, you do want to be sure to put something down on the bottom before you put your food in contact with it because even though it is dishwasher safe, it says it is not intended to come in contact with food. Now, I will be totally honest. I don't know if I will actually put anything down, but you know, it's just for me and my family. But according to the manufacturer's directions, you do not want this to come in contact with food. So just put a doily or a little clear plate or something down before you put your food down. So now I'm going to pop this into my cold 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to allow it to cool completely. 
So I'll probably put it in tonight and then just let it cool in the oven and then pull it out in the morning and we can put our whole little vignette together. I cannot get over how adorable the cheat day cake plate is. Honestly, it looks just like the one from Ray Dunn, but I will be changing this one out for every single season and holiday, so I'm not just stuck with one single thing. Now, if you're interested in the free SVG file, I'll put that down in the description box, or if you want to purchase your own, I'll put a link to my shop in the description box for that as well. Didn't everything turn out so cute? I'm so excited about this. My honey is just going to love this so, so much. And, of course, on Valentine's Day, that is the perfect day to cheat. So this cake plate is perfect. That does it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And until next time, happy DIYing, y'all.